Mathies, Gato's here. Welcome to section 6.2. This is where all the magic happens. But let's review section 7.1 first. So I have four statements made about absolute values of a number. We have to decipher them as true or false. Okay, first statement. The absolute value of a real number can be positive or negative. Hopefully you recognize that as false. That's the definition of an absolute value. It's the distance a number is from zero, so it can't be negative, it has to be positive. So we'll record a two. The absolute value of a real number is the distance a number is from zero. That is true, as I just mentioned, that is the definition. Statement number three, the absolute value of a real number can never be negative. That is also true because the absolute value is a distance and distance has to be positive. And that last statement, the absolute value of zero is undefined. That statement is false, that's for division. Division by zero is undefined, but the absolute value of zero is just zero itself. So the code for this will be 2112. Okay, let's try this question here. And I would actually recommend for this one here, pausing the video, trying the question yourself and coming back to see if you did it correctly. So hopefully you remember I said to use your absolute value like brackets. So you work inside the absolute value using order of operations. So inside the red absolute value, five squared take away seven, I'm going to do my five squared, which is 25. In the blue set of brackets, I'll do my two cubed, which is eight. And in my purple absolute value, I'm gonna take the cube root of negative 64, which is negative four. Now, don't forget there is a negative up front. So it's a negative, negative four. So in my next step, let's simplify these. So 25 take away seven is 18, negative 10 and eight is negative two. And two negatives here make a positive four. Now that we've done that, let's evaluate the absolute value. So absolute value of 18 is just 18. The absolute value of negative two is two. The absolute value of four is four. So all I have to do now is add these together. So 18 plus two plus four, 24. Now I'm a big fan of the check. Always put it in your calculator to check and you can see we get 24. So we know we did that correctly. So in this video, we're gonna take the absolute value a little bit further and we're gonna put variables into the mix. So we're going to look at what does it mean to take the absolute value of a function? And in the second part of this video, we're going to look at how do we write a piecewise function of an absolute value? So let's start with what an absolute value function really is. So an absolute value function is a function that has an absolute value around it. So the variable has to be within the absolute value. So for example, our base function, f of x is the absolute value of x. So this is what the graph looks like. So let's look at this. The input, which is your x, you can see could be positive or negative. So here it's negative, zero, and positive. So the input can be any value. That's why my domain is the set of all x such that x is an element of the reals. My range, however, since it is the output, has to always be positive, which is the definition of an absolute value. So you'll notice that all of these values here are positive. And looking at the graph, I can see that y is above the x-axis, which is why it has a range the set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to zero, but still an element of the reals. Well, let's look at another function here. We're gonna do the absolute value of f of x where f of x is a quadratic function. So I'm going to take all of my x values. So all of these x values of the original function, they stay the same, okay? Because the input can be positive or negative. It is the output that becomes positive. So when I do all of these function values for f of x and I take the absolute value, they all become positive. So this first table of values is for my function. The second table of values is for my absolute value. And let's look at the graph of that. So for the graph of this, you can see what happened. 
all of my x values stay the same. It's my y values that change. So see this part of the graph right here that was above the x-axis stays above the x-axis. And this part of the graph that was negative, we reflect it over the x-axis because the absolute value of a negative becomes positive. So that's what my graph looks like. So here's the steps that we're going to be doing. Now, right off the, the start here, I want to give you a tip that when I talk about functions, it's all about the y. Whenever we talk about a function, we're talking about the y values. So any points above the y axis, or sorry, the x-axis stay above because the absolute value of a positive is a positive. Any points below the x-axis are reflected above because the absolute value of a negative becomes positive. Any points on the x-axis stay on the x-axis because the absolute value of zero is zero. Now let's talk about invariant points. Any point on or above the x-axis is an invariant point. And remember, invariant points are points that stay the same even after the absolute value has been taken. So let's use these tips to do a graph here. So we have the graph of f of x, and I want to sketch the graph of the absolute value of f of x. So the first thing that I'm going to look at is points where I'm above the x-axis. So you can see from 1 onwards for x, I am above, all my y values are positive. Now, I know the absolute value of a positive is a positive, so they stay the same in the absolute value function. So you can see that part of the graph stays the same for the absolute value of f of x. Now let's look at the negative part of this graph. So this graph down here to the left of 1 has all y values that are negative. And the absolute value of a negative is a positive. So those points are going to be reflected in the x-axis. So for example, this y-intercept at negative 3 is going to become a y-intercept at positive 3. And that helps give me a little bit of a shape. So my original linear function that had domain and range that were an element of the reals has now changed because it's the absolute value. So again, remember that the domain for x is that it's an element of the reals. The input can be positive or negative. And looking at that graph, I can see that all my y values are positive. So the range is y greater than or equal to 0. But again, I want you guys to write this in proper set notation. Let's try one with a quadratic. So we have a quadratic that is opening down, so my a value I know is negative. The domain for any quadratic is x as an element to the reals. You can see the range is everything 5 and less. So y is less than or equal to 5. So again, let's do the same thing we did on the last example. Let's identify our positive pieces first. So you can see that the function is positive, meaning above the x-axis, in between x values of negative 1 and 5. So the same thing will be true over here. Let's try that one again here. So our positive pieces, so our positive piece will stay the same. Okay, so see the vertex stays the same, the x-intercepts stay the same, everything there is the same. Let's look at the negative pieces. So two negative pieces there, to the left of negative one, to the right of positive five. Those are all the negative pieces. They will be reflected in the x-axis and they will become positive pieces. So it's kind of that W shape. So stating the domain and the range, the domain of the absolute value function is any real number. And the range you can see on the graph is everything zero and bigger. So y greater than or equal to zero. So what I want to look at now is instead of me giving you the graph, I'm going to give you the equation of a function and ask you to graph its absolute value. So you're going to graph the base function to find the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are the most important part because they separate the function into its positive and negative piece. So the positive piece above the x-axis stays where they are. They are invariant points. Any points below the x-axis will be reflected. And I always want you to check your answer in the graphing calculator. So let's try this one here. I want to graph the absolute value of 2x minus 5. So I'm going to start, first of all, by graphing the function itself, 2x minus 5. I want two points on there, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. 
The x-intercept tells me the separation between positive and negative pieces. The y-intercept will help me give shape to the graph. Step number two, keep positive. Well, in absolute value and in life, always good to keep positive. And then reflect the negative. So you can see here the positive piece to the right of 2.5 stays that way. The negative piece is going to be reflected. So in step number three, you can see this is what my absolute value will look like. So the domain here, x is an element of the reals. The range, y greater than or equal to zero. Always look at the graph for the range. Okay, let's try this one here. So I want to graph the absolute value of negative x minus 3. Might be a good idea for you guys to pause the video and try this one on your own and then come back and see the results. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph my function inside the absolute value without the absolute value sign. So this is just the graph of negative x minus 3. Then I'm going to identify my positive and negative pieces. So let's start with my positive piece. So if I am to the left of negative 3, that's my positive piece. It stays the same for my absolute value. Then let's look at my negative piece. My negative piece to the right of negative 3 gets reflected in the x-axis. So you can see this y-intercept at negative 3 becomes a y-intercept at positive 3. And then let's just state our domain and range. The domain, no limits. You can have an input that's positive or negative. Those arms extend infinitely in both directions. And the range is that y is greater than or equal to 0, but still an element of the reals. Always a good idea to check that on the graph. So I put it in my graph, and I can see that my graphs match. So I know I've done that correctly. Okay, last example here, let's do a quadratic. So again, I look inside the absolute value and I graph the quadratic and I'm interested in getting the x-intercepts, the y-intercept and the vertex. All of these points are gonna help give me shape to my graph. Next part that I do is I look at the positive piece. So the positive piece here is to the left of negative 6, to the right of negative 1. That stays the same. So you can see it stays the same on my absolute value. And then this part below the x-axis, the negative piece, gets reflected in the x-axis. So you can see again I have that W shape. So domain and range. The domain, x is an element of the reals. So it doesn't matter whether my input is positive or negative. Also, I know these arms extend infinitely in both directions, covering all the x values. The range is that y is greater than or equal to 0, but still an element of the reals. So the last thing that I would want to do is check this on the graphing calculator, and you can see we have a pretty good match. So I know I did that correctly. So hopefully all this absolute value functions make sense. You know what I love most about absolute values is that they won't put up with any negativity. So you guys can go ahead and do practice questions in your notes. Detailed solutions are on D2L and then move on to your textbook questions. So I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Fun.